This is Ayana, the founder of Thrive and Be Whole, and I am so excited to be coming to you live. I am your health coach, and I have some really juicy, great stuff to talk to you about on this live video today. I hope you all are having a wonderful start to your day or whenever you're tuning into this. End of the day, evening, middle of the night, I don't care. Thank you for showing up with me. <laughs> and if you're here live, that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to pause for just another minute or so to give people an opportunity to join live. And uh, before I jump into exactly, before I dive into the material, let me just give you a quick overview of what this is. So in our group together, you know, every day is a different theme. And Thursday is Q&A Thursday in the group. So it's an opportunity for you to talk about your challenges. You know, every other day there's, you know, we celebrate ourselves, we have fun, there's joy, but we also have to acknowledge that a healthy lifestyle is challenging and it's difficult. And, you know, there are times when we feel really up and high and, and like, I got this and I can take on the world and, and, and I know what I'm doing. And then there are times when you feel down in the dumps, when you feel low, when you're just like, I cannot do this. Why am I struggling so much with this? Right? So this is, so this uh, Q and A day on Thursdays is an opportunity for you to write in, you know, you can uh, messaging me with your thoughts and questions, issues that are coming up for you. And without me, uh, you know, saying who you are, just kind of talking about it in a general way and providing some feedback. So that way the whole group can benefit from it. Because I guarantee you, you are not the only person with that question. And I also guarantee you that I probably went through it myself, okay? <laughs> Which is part of the reason why I can speak so authentically and confidently to these tips that I'm gonna provide you today. Okay, and so thank you so much. You asked and I'm going to answer and people were writing in and, and messaged me with a couple of different questions. Thank you so much for doing that. The questions that kept coming up the most were about motivation. There were a couple of other questions, but time and time again, and the one that I hear repeatedly and repeatedly is how do you find motivation? You know, how is it that you stay motivated when with working out and with a healthy lifestyle? I mean, let's face it, we are busy people. And you know, it's very easy to get tired, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed in our schedules. And also not to mention the fact that whether, no matter where you are in your health journey, there it can feel really intimidating. You know, especially if like me, you were up and down in your weight and up and down in a healthy lifestyle and up and like sometimes working out, sometimes not, sometimes eating the right things, sometimes not, right? So if, you're, if you've had that pattern and you've internalized about yourself that, that this is intimidating or hard or that you can't do it, of course you're motivated. It's gonna be very, very hard to stay motivated. So what we're gonna do is now, here's the good news. The good news is I'm gonna give you some tips on how to deal with motivation, okay? Or how to improve your motivation so that you can stay in it for life. Because that's what we all want, right? We wanna be able to say, to wake up and just be naturally motivated to work out on our own, right? Not having to set an alarm, not having to trick ourselves into doing it, not having to, where it feels like a chore all the time, it's something you have to do all the time, right? We wanna just wake up, feel naturally motivated to eat the right things and eat energizing foods. So, how do you do that? And if you're like, is that possible? It is, don't worry. You don't have to live the rest of your life up and down and forcing yourself to live in, un, in an unhappy way, forcing yourself to do things that you hate, forcing yourself to eat bland chicken breast. You don't have to live that way, okay? So here's how you get some motivation. So for the first thing is, my first tip for you is to first ask yourself a couple of questions, okay? The first thing is, you know, asking yourself, what is really underneath what is really sapping my motivation right now? Or what is really making it hard for me to stay consistent with my health goals? Is it that my schedule is overwhelming? Okay, is it my energy levels are really low throughout the day, you know, and especially when I get home? Is it that you feel overwhelmed at the idea, like it just feels like it's so much to do, right? The idea of losing weight and losing like, you know, as I lost 40 to 50 pounds, it was an overwhelm. It seemed like an overwhelming prospect for me. It's like, how will I ever lose 40 to 50 pounds? Okay. And so no matter what, you know, like, so first asking yourself that question, because there's a, kind of a different way that you can tackle each one. So the first thing is, you know, if, if it's a scheduling thing for you, if you are motivated, you want to do the work, but you're just, your schedule is just really what's bogging you down. Then you do have to really ask yourself how you can lighten it up. 
okay? This is an, an important thing. We talk about this a lot, but saying no to things is really, really, really important in order for you to have the self-care that you need to make it. So if you find that your schedule is just so out of control that you have no time, you can't even get 20 minutes for yourself a day, then you need to check your schedule and check yourself. And you have to ask yourself, you know, where are you ranking yourself? How, how highly do you rank yourself in your life? How much of a priority are you to you if you are at the bottom of the totem pole, okay? So you deserve to work your way up to the bottom of the totem pole and work on using an empowering no, setting limits for yourself, okay? And then also too, if, if there's an issue with energy levels, because I, you know, I know you guys are all very busy and these are all things that I've felt as well too. I was overwhelmed in my schedule. I also had low energy. <laughs> and one of the things that low energy, you know, so when it comes to low energy, there's a lot of different things that can be causing it, medical conditions, um, you know, your schedule. But you know, you also wanna check your diet for energy levels, because I'll tell you this, even though I had a really busy schedule, when I started eating um, what we call like, energy lifting foods, you know, healthier foods, foods that feed you and nourish your body and give you all the vitamins and stuff you need, you find that you naturally have more energy than you thought you could. Okay, so that's that's another tip. So check your nutrition if your energy levels are just so low or you won't just want to crash and nap a lot. Okay, and also check in with a doctor too to see if there's anything hormonal or anything else going on. Okay, then also too, if you're feeling overwhelmed at the prospect of having to, like this is a monumentous goal, you know, you're just like, oh, there's no way. How am I going to lose 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds? It's just my head, right? It, where do I even start? Just slow yourself down and break everything into small chunks, okay? So if you're overwhelmed at the prospect of the goal, hi, thanks for watching. Just slow yourself down, rewind yourself back, okay? And just remember to take it one small step at a time. Now, what I like to do is I'm a planner person. As a matter of fact, my notes right now are like, I, I use a planner page that I created for myself. Uh, yeah, I did create my own planner page. <laughs> my husband makes fun of me for, for all of my planner stuff. But I, one of the things that I love to do is when I have a big goal, you know, losing 20 pounds, 30 pounds, whatever it is, or, or just creating a healthier lifestyle, and I feel overwhelmed at it, that usually is a signal to our brains, you know, listen to that. It's a signal that we need to break it down into smaller chunks. Okay, so set, so write down your big goal, and then write down the smaller goals and what date you want to achieve them by. Okay, so that's what I would recommend to you in that moment. Okay, now I could spend a lot of time on that. And actually, maybe someday I'll, I will do a, a video about how I did that with my health goals. But this, I want to come to, so that was the, but I want to um, spend some more time talking about motivation since that's what this video is about. Uh, the first, as I said to you before, the first question is asking yourself, what is, you know, what are the feelings that are coming up that are making you lose motivation, right? We talked about that. That was the first tip. Now, the second tip, is having fun, okay? Now, because <laughs> you're in this group, you've heard me say this before, but for some reason, we need it repeated 55 times, <laughs> okay? We have, we have so many things on our plate. You know, we have, it, it's very common for us to lose ourselves, for us to lose fun, for us to lose joy in this whole process and in our lives. But I promise you, this is a huge thing when it comes to motivation. Now, when I lost, as I was losing the 40 to 50 pounds, I started organically and naturally working on just bringing more joy into my life. And it was amazing how, you know, the happier that I felt, the more positive energy that I was bringing to the whole weight loss process. So the happier that I felt in my own skin, the more joy I was having, the more um, self-care I was having, the more time I was spending with friends, the more naturally motivated and higher my spirits were lifted, okay? And the other thing too, you have to intentionally create it. You have to force yourself to make that time. It's very hard. We have so much going on in our schedules. I know we have babies, kids, bills, you know, jobs, et cetera, but you have to make time for yourself. And especially when it comes to a workout, okay? <laughs> so working out, you could raise your hand if working out is intimidating for you, okay? It's definitely, it definitely was more intimidating for me. You know, I think I told you guys this story before where I think um, the first time I, I now like running, but... I actually got into, I used to hate running my whole life. And I'm not here to sell you on running. I'm just telling you my personal experience. Okay, you don't have to do running. <laughs> you don't have to be a runner. But the first time that I decided to run, I did it because I was raising money for an organization that I believed in. And they were doing this thing where if you train for a half marathon and raised money for it, you know, it was a big fundraiser for their organization. So because I believed in this organization so much, 
I was like, let me do something really outside of my comfort zone is also would have been a tribute to my mom because it was an, about an illness that she had. So I was like, you know, I was like, let me do the impossible. Let me push myself. This will be a really good opportunity for me to show how much I want to support my mom and support the organization. I went to the very first practice for this half marathon training, did not read the fine print. Apparently you had to be able to run two miles comfortably <laughs> in order to particip participate in the group. I didn't see that coming. My first run as an adult, like, like this was the first time I'd run since middle school. I'd avoid running most of my life. It was when I tell you it was the most awful thing I've ever done in my whole life. It was awful. I was huffing and puffing. I couldn't breathe. I had to stop. You know, I, I was walking a lot, <laughs> but I reached the finish line on that two miles. I started to second guess myself and say, what did I just sign up for? This is crazy. There's no way I can possibly get this done. And I wanted to back out. But unfortunately, I'd already made it public <laughs> that I was raising money. People had already started donating. So I had no choice. But what I discovered was, you know, that when I kept trying, because I had set that goal for myself and because I had accountability, <laughs> I had no choice. But when I kept trying, I actually, I actually figured out that I really liked it. And I actually enjoy running to this day. And I'm actually pretty good at running. I can, I can run six miles comfortably. You know, if there were a half marathon in a couple of months, I'd be fine for it. All of that. Do you see what I'm saying? So my point to you is that if you don't have to go through that experience though, you can find when it comes to working out, finding what it is that you love to do right now, okay? And again, I say that story to say that we all start from a beginning place. So start where you are right now. You don't have to go like I did and accidentally run a half a marathon, but start where you are today. Okay, do what is comfortable for you. Stretching. So if it's been a while, just start with some stretching. Start with moving your body and finding free videos on YouTube. There's a plethora of things on there. You can find um, workouts for people who are recovering from injuries. There's a ton of stuff, okay? Walking. Walking can be great. And so, again, finding what gives you joy. Dancing. Something that is going to be fun that you're going to look forward to. That's the key thing. It's something you're going to look forward to. I now look forward to running because I like checking out the scenery around me. I like, you know, being with the, the women that I run around with. So I look forward to it. And that's the reason why I keep it in my life. Okay. So joy, don't force yourself into a box, do what makes you happy. That will naturally motivate you. You will find yourself actually looking forward to it instead of hating it <laughs> and dreading it and viewing it as a chore. Okay. Fun is huge. Okay, and then the third tip, the last tip that we're going to come to here is, okay, so getting past your hangups with joy and fun, okay? Checking your mindset. And here's, here's the, the bigger thing about all of this is if you don't feel as though you deserve this life, if you don't feel as though you deserve a healthier body, if you don't feel as though you're capable of doing it, you will sabotage yourself every time. OK, I remember the countless times when my alarm would go off and I had big plans of getting up and working out and I would talk myself, well, oh, it's early and I did this yesterday and maybe I should just stay in bed. And now every now and then that's that's OK. But if that is your regular voice or your regular thing that's going on, you might want to check yourself on your mindset. What thoughts are running underneath that that are telling you that you don't deserve it, that you don't that you don't deserve that life. I'll tell you what was happening for me. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't really believe that I could do it. And I didn't want, and so I was sabotaging myself and I was shutting myself down so that I didn't fail publicly. <laughs> I was really, you know, I, my, my self-esteem and my body issues, you know, I had a, decades of, of these feelings. And so I just didn't feel like it was possible for me to live a healthier lifestyle. And I didn't feel like it was possible for me to have this the body that I wanted to and to live the life that I thought I could. And so it, when you are, if you have that mindset and you let that go unchecked, you wind up sabotaging yourself every time. And what we do is, you know, our minds are so smart. <laughs> we have a really good knack of telling ourselves that it's all environmental. It's just because I was so busy. It's just because I have a kid. I have the X, Y, Z going on. And, the, and that's why I shut myself down. But you and I both know the truth, right? I knew the truth about myself. I didn't want to show up and fail. I didn't want to, uh, to confirm to myself that I wasn't good enough or that I couldn't do it. And it was more comfortable for me to stay in my box. I didn't want to step into that fear of the unknown. 
And so if you know that that's you, that's okay. You can get past that, but you have to work past your mindset. And so in this group, if you look in the files, there's two things, two resources I'm going to recommend for that. The first thing is, um, you know, there are these uh, self-love and self-forgiveness journals and self-compassion journals that I have in the group. If you go to the files section of this group, you'll see that they're there. Okay. Now, those are really amazing. If you journal with those regularly, it'll help you change your mindset about what you deserve. They are awesome. And I use them frequently. I like, I journaled with them uh, for, for many weeks when I was really just trying to focus on my mindset and overcome my own, de my depression. I also worked with a therapist too, but these were, these helped me in between sessions. You can also use them on the spot. So if you're feeling really down in the moment, you can just use, whip them out and, and use them. That's how I use them now. Okay. And the other resource that I want to offer you too, is that, you know, um, we said this before, part of the reason why I wanted to build this group is because we need community. We need each other, okay? And so you have the right to check in with me and to, um, and matter of fact, I'm gonna put this in the comments right now, the link to set up a free call with me. Um, it's thriveandbehole.com slash apply, okay? So I put the, co the link in the comments and I'll also put it in the description. But you know, if you are in this place where your mindset, you know your mindset is just holding you back and you really just wanna burst forward and you've had enough, you've had enough of living in the shadows and you've had enough of like the up and down roller coaster and you're just like, I need help with the weight loss part of it like I need help with the nutritional stuff, but I also need help with my mindset. I need someone to help coach and guide me. Just, you know, sign up for a quick, a 50 minute breakthrough session with me. That breakthrough session is just designed to help you figure out what is blocking you personally and help you with an action strategy for how to get through it. Okay. It's very simple. So we all need support. The best support that I got was when I got health coached myself, which is why I'm, I'm such a huge believer in it, okay? So take the, the time and the opportunity. These are all things like having a breakthrough session, you know, um, journaling. These are all powerful, powerful techniques that can help you address your mindset, okay? You got this and you are amazing and you are incredible. Thank you so much if you joined me live. Oh, are there any, any questions before I go? Okay, if you have any questions or comments, you can type them in the, the comment box. I'll give you just uh, one second as I say one more thing about the, about the breakthrough session. Click on that link, it's free, there's no pressure. You just go ahead, get, you know, get your, <laughs> it, it's a life changing thing. You know, sometimes there are these, we have these thoughts and feelings that we have difficulty working through and we don't know why we're sabotaging ourselves so much. And the breakthrough session is designed to give you that clarity and that plan, okay? You got this, you're amazing. You're powerful. And I'll be checking out this video for the next couple of hours if you come up with any questions or, or, or other comments, okay? Have a great rest of the day, everyone. And thank you for all the, the amazing questions for Q&A Thursday. Bye. Oh, one more thing. Invite your friends to this group. If you feel like there's other people who could benefit and, and would enjoy this group, invite them to come. It's, you know, you know, it's totally free to be in here. All right, take care. Bye, ladies.